Hey YouTubers, this is Bob Henderson1 here, again with another tutorial on my color correction workflow from Final Cut Pro 10 into After Effects and back. Uh, just as a disclaimer, this video is my specialized way of color correcting my footage from Final Cut Pro X here in After Effects because if you're like me, the color correction tool here in um, Final Cut Pro 10 is not as intuitive and as customized as the one in After Effects is. Um, although it does allow you to do edits um, to your different levels and RGB channels and it even allows you to um, add color correction layers and enable and disable them as you would in After Effects, it's just not the same. So this tutorial is on how to export your timeline here into After Effects, do all your edits and then bring it back into Final Cut Pro 10 and render it out as your picture locked movie. And also for me in this particular project, um, adding some VFX into this scene here. So that particularly helps um, in taking it into After Effects. So in order to do that, we will need to download a tool here on the internet called Clip Exporter. Um, and this basically takes the XML file from Final Cut Pro X with all your information, all your metadata, and basically translates it into Final Cut, I mean, into After Effects, sorry. It translates the Final Cut Pro XML into After Effects language um, and lets it sort of play your timeline within After Effects as it is verbatim in Final Cut Pro X. So just download Clip Exported 2. Um, was free when I first got it. Not sure how it is now, but this is what I'm using. I'm using Exporter 1. So what we're going to do now is to just examine the timeline. So we can see here we are at 20 seconds total. Um, this is a relatively short promo I'm doing for one of my clients. And we're at 20 seconds and zero frames here exactly. And I'm sure here, this is a retimed clip. Um, we have some uh, some transitions and some sound, all of which will be interpreted by After Effects with Clip Exporter. Okay, so the first step is to go into a uh, file and export XML. And for this, I'll just call it tutorial sequence. And metadata view is basically um here. This stuff here, basically the info about each of your clips. So um, you can choose to export it or not, depending on what kind of editing you'll be doing. If you need to really log your footage and keep track of what's what, then you should give a more extended metadata list. But for this simple tutorial, I will not. So once again, file, sorry, go to timeline here. So file, export XML into the desktop, general, and save and final cut will just shoot that right out for us onto the desktop and we can scroll on over here and you can see that here is the XML file so now I will open up clip exporter and it'll automatically open up a dialog box and if not just go to file open and I'll choose the tutorial sequence on my desktop and okay so this project contains one retime clipped um, and that was this clip here you go to show retime editor. It was slowed down by 50% to give it sort of um life, that kind of thing. Um and so sometimes you may run into into problems, but you usually you shouldn't. So just keep that note that. So please note that only oh, support after after effects export. And that means that while you ran preview in After Effects, um you won't have it slowed down. But once you export it, it will be slowed down, I believe. But it usually works for me, so let's go ahead and click OK. And handle frames, pretty much if you hover over, it tells you what each is. Extra frames that would be added before and after each clip. So basically, before and after each of these clips, you can add like a little black space or handle frames as they call it if you want. If not, then leave as is. I don't, um, just because I like my timeline to be exactly the same length. And um, serialization start is what will name each of the footage, and I'll show you what they mean by that later on. And yeah, project abbreviation if you want to give each clip a little special name. I don't so and so I'm gonna be exporting for After Effects you can do it for I believe this is blender and click time but we are exporting to After Effects so choose the After Effects folder and then click run and choose anywhere you want to export to I use do desktop and cool 17 clips processed and 17 clips is the amount of clips I used in this clip here in this project I think and that's including the audio and the secondary audio and third audio tracks as well. Okay, so now that that's there, the dot 
Jsx, we can go into After Effects, go to File, New Project, and then Import, I mean, sorry, Scripts, Run Script File. And what you do is just click this Tutorial Sequence Jsx, or whatever yours is called, and After Effects will interpret that language. And in your project dial, project box, you just have the same tutorial sequence. And just click that right up, and you can see that we have the same timeline duplicated in After Effects. Again, with a total... Sorry, my computer's dying. Uh, with a total of 19 seconds and 29 frames. So we've lost a frame somehow, somewhere. But it usually works out. Um, yeah, we're good. And so let's just talk about this over here. So compound clips, everyone knows that in Final Cut Pro 10, compound clips are basically pre-comps in After Effects. Um, I didn't have any, so there's none. Oh, well, actually I did, because I did compound clip some of the audio tracks. Um, just edited it a little bit. Um, so those will be in there. And your media, everything, all your source footage. And then shots are the edited, like the edited footage. So for an example, MVI 151 is this bad boy right here. This is the whole source footage going along. And the composition 151 is the edited version. So, you know, what we cut down, you know, the selection, the in and out points that we, that we chose. So not the whole thing. So basically, if you go to the tutorial sequence, I'll bring up the timeline. You see the same thing that we saw here. Actually, I'm gonna put these side by side. Okay, so we have our movie tracks, and these are all our audio tracks, including this as well. And same thing pretty much replicated here. Let's take a look now at the timeline and just really understand what's going on here. So here is the audio, here are the audio files, including the um, compound clip audio file that I made within Final Cut Pro X, and each of the scenes or shots here as compositions as well. And if we change this from layer name to source name, you can see that um, Clip Exporter gave each of these a serialized number. Um, this is more important for more when you have um, when you're using pretty much two clips, but they're cut at different times. So you have different in and out points from the same clip. It'll have the same name because it's from the same source clip, but um, it might give it a different layer name if it's later on within the sequence. If that makes any sense. Um, but for right now, they're all different clips okay all right so this is it pretty much and so now what I usually like to do is I, I usually um, color correct within After Effects and one of the main reasons I brought it into After Effects was in order to do some VFX on one scene so as soon as my computer decides to work okay so basically this scene I want to add some VFX um, I'm not gonna do it right here in the tour in the in the tutorial, I already did it before, so I'll just import it once again. The project I did. Um, so I can find it. Oh, here we are. So import the project. Re disregard what I'm doing right now. I'm just pretend I'm pretend I'm doing the VFX, which I did a while ago. Um, here, scene one. So I'll replace that with that scene one. So basically that's after I've done my VFX and After Effects. So I can shut that off. Um, if you want to see the before and after. It's basically um, a dolly shot in 3D space um, for a promo I was doing. Anyway, I turned that one off. So basically, first clip is done. And pretty much what you do is you go around to each clip and color correct. That's how I do it, at least. So um, I'll just do a very quick color correction. It's not what I normally do. So I say color from this, finesse. Let's go into your curves here. I actually want this a little lighter, a little washed out tone. Just go with the typical Hollywood, um, Hollywood color grade here. Okay, this is very fast by the way, it's just don't judge me. It's terrible color correction. Uh, color grading, whatever. Not whatever, they're, they're very different, but you get the gist. Uh, same thing here, just give it a little more, a little less contrast, very washed out look. Maybe up the blues in the shadows a little more. Okay, next clip. So pretty much this is what I do. I'd go into After Effects and give each of these a little color grade. 
every clip here has been color graded now and I think we're ready for export um, and depending on how you're, you want your export to be uh, that will determine what your render settings are so I'm done here with an After Effects so I'll go to composition um, add to render queue and name it tutorial sequence best settings full resolution and and this is where it's really important when you're if you're going to import back into Final Cut Pro X to export from there or to continue editing you need to change your format options um, video codecs are a whole other part of post-production that um, people usually get confused about for me I will be exporting to Apple Pro as 422 HQ or just 422 depending on how my computer wants to act today um, and that's basically just so I can edit it without having to re-render in the timeline because this is the native um, native codec of Final Cut Pro X and it'll also give me some great uncompressed uh, footage uh, but if you can't you can also do H.264 or even H.263 and even animation if you're up for it for some uncompressed uh, uncompressed video files so just go right ahead I'm gonna for the sake of this do Apple ProRes 422 okay okay and hit caps lock to speed up the render time and just go ahead and click render and I will let it render and once it's done rendering we will pick right back up all right so we've got it rendered out into a file and now we're back here in Final Cut Pro X and we're going to import that rendered file so import media and I rendered it to this hard drive here and here it is tutorial sequence color graded so there it is import uh, in a perfect world I'd create some proxy media to work better but I'll just leave it in place for now and work directly from the original uh, I'll just find it oh missing footage not good okay so we'll start wherever my footage is here so basically since it's the same export time we can pretty much just lay it over and see that it's exactly the same amount of time so you know if you go here that's the After Effects piece and that's before so before and after clicking V on the keyboard to disable the top layer there to see the before and after um, but that won't do we want to split this up at least I do so basically I start from the beginning see where the out point is for this clip and it's over there so I'll go back a few frames um, to here okay so that's the out point basically just put it here and replace it because it's the same exact time so replace it with the picture locked just take the auto out same for here so this is the end time all the way to the out time and I'll just go ahead and fast forward this while I do this but you get the, you get the gist you just replacing each of these with the color corrected version from After Effects particularly I wanted us to look at the retimed clips just to assure you that the retimed clips are indeed retimed and not something else then for the retimed clip life all the great move back some oh, great shot I wonder who shot that <laughs> put that over replace so now we've got our retime shot from the After Effects export. Life. All these. Yeah, okay. Rendering's not gonna. Not happening today. So as you can see, we're still back at 20 seconds and zero frames. The whole picture's color graded. Even the retime footage is great. All these media. There's no transitions for us today. Censored in one anyway, way or the. That's that. The After Effects VFX the human scene mind, is great. The only place where one is completely free um, to think and express at the their eyes. It's going to explode soon. But anyway, that's pretty much it. So you can continue editing from here. Maybe add some titles. You know, tweak the audio settings a little bit. And then once you're done, just go to the good old after, um, Final Cut Pro export. And if you have a compressor, you can send it to compressor. Um, but I just do a master file from here. Um, and yeah, I think that concludes the tutorial. So I hope this sort of helps people who are looking to color correct in After Effects from Final Cut Pro X.
So this concludes the tutorial. Stick around for some more great post-production tutorials and some uh, production gear reviews and everything like that. We'll be coming out with a few stuff in the next few months, so keep your eyes peeled and maybe hit the subscribe button.